All right, this is Willie over here at Hash Finders in Livingston, Montana, and we're going to tie my uh, micro zonker. This is a Dairiki 285, which is one of my favorite hooks um, because it's stout. It's real stout. It uses a nymph hook, but I like to use it on this particular fly because it allows a fly to swim and or roll depending on how you want it to, to fish. And I'm going to start my thread out behind the eye there a little ways to kind of tell me where I want to start my head. And I'm going to go ahead and wind the thread back here, get rid of my tag. I'm going to hang that thread down there that tells me that's into the shank right there at the back of the barb. This is a fairly quick little fly. Um, happened to be my number one fly last year during the guide season. And I'm going to be using some Mirage. Uh, Crinkle or crystal flash, and I'm going to tie in three strands like so, just three good wraps, and then I'm going to bring it back like this, and double over on yourself on itself, and I'm going to make that about the length of the shank, so you can see that it's kind of like so. I'm going to be using two kinds of flash tonight on this. Um, first is the crystal flash, and then I'm going to add some twenty thousandths lead up here to give it some weight. And I'm going to start that right at the point and then wrap that thread back because I don't want to super weight this. I just want enough to break the tension and get it down a little ways and bring it up, tie it off right there where I started where I want my head to be. So there's a reason that I do those thread wraps the way that I tie it on with a purpose that tells me different uh, segments of the fly of where to start or finish. I'm going to come up here like this and tie this down nice and tight. And I'm using a 3 op mono cord. And I'm going to end up right back here at the tail where I started. And I'm going to take some pine squirrel of your choice, color of your choice. You can change out the different bodies. Tonight we're going to do the olive one. And uh, this has already been cut and trimmed to taper. I like to have a taper on this and I'm going to go ahead and spread this hair apart like so where it's separated and set it right down in there and it should be about the same length as the tail and that's about as close as I'm going to get. I'm going to kind of angle it back towards me a little bit because it has a tendency to want to roll and make a nice loose wrap on it bring my thread around and then I'm going to cinch and that comes right up into place and I'm going to make five or six good wraps on that, good solid wraps. If this comes loose when you're fishing or whatever, it's not going to make a lot of difference. It'll just free swim. But you can see there's some pretty good tension on that thread right there, a nice thread build up, and I'll go ahead and let that go. And what I'm going to do is bring this squirrel right back over the top and just kind of get it out of my way, bring my thread up in front, and tie a half hitch. And then I'm going to use a dubbing twister and make myself a dubbing loop. And I just kind of wrap around a couple of times, bring it right up and cinch. And it gives me my nice dubbing loop, nice and quick and easy. Next I'm going to be using some SLF prism in a olive brown color. You can use pearl or black or whatever color you want to add to it. And I'm going to be pulling it using a pinch technique to get it to where it's kind of straight, like so. And I'll apply it to my dubbing loop, like so. Here again on dubbing, less is more. You don't need a lot. And when you get it up in the thread, you want to kind of spread it out a little bit. Because all you're going to do is make kind of a nice little body. You don't need to use an, a, a huge amount because it'll just fall out anyway. And it looks like there's a lot on there, but really there's not. It's spread out nice and evenly through that, and it's very sparse most of the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and spin that. Hopefully lose it. Don't lose it like that, but it worked out fine. And as you spin this, it starts to leave some 
fragment or some extra edges there and you can spin it up a little bit. That's good right there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this around. It's a fun little fly to tie. It's a lot more fun to fish it because the way that the fish eat it, they really are aggressive. I mean, they really eat this thing hard. In fact, most of last year I was using 2X on my dropper because 3X wasn't making it. They were breaking it off on the take. You can see how nice and fluffy that, that prism gets like that. And it changes color in the water also. It turns to a little bit darker color with some outside edges that are more transparent. I'm going to go ahead and tie that off, bring this back, and try to keep that spot that I wanted in my head. Kind of build myself up a little landing right there. Now I'm going to bring this pine squirrel. I'm just going to kind of push this dubbing down just a little bit to get some more of the little segments out there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the pine squirrel forward, separate it out like so come up and make a few wraps of thread. Now this particular thing, I've got a lot of tension on that hide. I'm making it really tight in there. I want it stretched tight. And I'm really putting a lot of tension on that thread too, almost to the point of breaking it. And now I'm gonna bring that hide back. And this is the technique that I use on the Crazy Rabbit also. But uh, a previous fly here on theweeklyfly.com. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this hide up. You do not need cross cut. You just need to learn how to wrap it proper. So you bring it down and forward, around to the side and towards the back. Bring it right up and around like so and it lays right into place. And I'm going to make about two wraps here. And actually you end up with about two and a half and it kind of builds up a little bit of a collar. Nice, simple little pattern. And I'm putting a lot of tension on that. I mean, if I put down, you can see how it's bending that hook, you know, or forcing that hook down. There's a lot of tension. I'm going to come in and snip that. Makes a nice little collar, and uh, the hair and, and all the body material kind of mix together. And I'm just going to kind of wet my fingers a little bit and kind of pull that back. That way I have um, the start of my head, which I've still got quite a bit of room there, and I'm just going to tie that stuff down to where there's a nice head. Now you could fish it like this, but I prefer to do it a little bit different. Um, I like to finish it out so it's pleasing to me. The last thing that I'm going to add to this is uh, some... Crinkle mirror flash, extremely flashy material. And I'm going to lay it right down on the side closest to me, right out to the, about the length of the tail. I'm going to pinch it like so, come up here, make a nice loose wrap. Make three or four good wraps on that. Bring it right straight back over the top, like so. Make a nice wrap there, then start to put it in position and tie that down. And then go like so, and you can see that that flash is right there where it needs to be. It's kind of just one more time, and you can see how that's starting to flash a little bit there. And I'm going to wrap back into it just a little bit to kind of secure that. And I'm going to bring my thread up to my eye, throw in a half hitch, and a whip finish. This is really one that you need to invest the time on to tie. This is probably one of my longer patterns that I've done here. Um, I'm just kind of keep that hair out of the way a little bit like so. Throw one more half hitch on it. doesn't really matter because I did a whip finish on it already. This just kind of hold things into position. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut that thread. And uh, looking for a tool here, but I don't have it. That's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide on a set of eyes, 2.5 millimeter on this size 8. And I'm going to apply one on either side. And 
And I try to make sure that it just stays in position on this bug. One thing that's really nice having a rotary vise like this that you can rotate. You can get these eyes put placed right in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just setting those eyes where I want them, you know, in about the right position that I want them. You can see how those eyes are, how that eye is just sitting there. Now, the unique material that I'm going to use here is kind of, uh, most fly tires don't use it because they're not aware of it. So what it is, is a waterproof fabric paint. And it comes in about a hundred different colors. It's super cheap, it's only about a buck fifty. And what I'm gonna do is now that those eyes are in place, instead of using a super glue or another type of glue, is it has a nice little nozzle and I'm just gonna take and place that right in there like so. Try not to get it out, out of, around into the eye there so much. I got a little overzealous and it got in there, but I can just wipe it off. And then I can just kind of place it in there. What this glue and or paint does, it acts like a glue and glues those eyes into position. And it is, like I say, it's pretty easy to use. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this around and I leave a little excess on there because it shrinks when it dries. And it gives me a nice little head on there that's uh, got a lot of sparkle in it. There we go. And that's the end of the fly. Got a nice flash down the side and in the body in that paint. Unfortunately, we can't wait for it to dry.